Okay, so, so welcome uh, uh, to this webinar, which you know, with lots of images and just generally talk about uh, all, all things as a dream. And you know, why do you know about this? Because the world's under tremendous stress. That's what I notice. Um, touching people, most people are in adrenalized states, which uh, what they're designed for. They're designed to help you out in a, a survival situation, not to help you out in a coldly ongoing survival situation. So I think it's something called exhaustion fatigue. And that is almost certainly a precursor for all kinds of di di difficult uh, conditions, um, which, you know, affect the body very dramatically. And, uh, Um, one second, and uh, try and get a sense of exactly where they are, and also trying to help them out as well. I think so. Let's go for it. Uh, here's a nice image, which is from a anatomy book from way back. This is kind of 19th century. I found somewhere. Anyway, it's just showing the. You know, the whole cascade of hormone glands in the body, and uh, for sure, the adrenals is one of those, a very important part of it, aren't they? So, you know, here, here it all is the, the glands in the cranium, the glands in the chest, the glands in the, the abdomen, and then in the pelvis. And uh, I'll just point to the adrenals there. One is, anyway, the other one's actually hidden behind the stomach there, but um, as you can see there, we've got quite a curious position in the body uh, lying on top of the kidneys. Um, they've got nothing to do with the kidney in terms of functionality. So it's kind of curious they come together and uh, I'm, I'm not quite sure why, but uh, I've got some ideas around it. Uh, so anyway, the adrenal glands are an endocrine gland, basically, and produce all kinds of different uh, substances, which we'll have a look at in a second. But they're right in the middle of the body. That's what that picture is saying. They're right in the thick of it, i.e. the thick of it in the body is the mid-organs of the torso, because it is incredibly busy there. There's, you know, a mighty amount of uh, action going on. Here's the next picture, which I really like because it shows the shape of glands and those are kind of classic pituitary glands. Right at the top there, I think that's meant to be the pineal gland actually, which is pine cone. And then here's the, is it a grape? Is it an olive? Something like that. That's the kind of shape of the pituitary. And then what's the shape of the thyroid gland? A bit like mini lungs, actually, except they curl like that. They, they are quite curious pet objects. And then the next one down is the adrenals, which, as you can see, are kind of triangular shaped, roughly speaking. So kind of spongy, slightly elongated 3D triangle. So then the pancreas over here, it's not over here actually, is so called, uh, well, kind of long and some people call it cigar shaped. I'm not quite sure why. The cigars don't have that big end. They're much more um, similar shape. Anyway, it's kind of long and pointy. <clears throat> and then the ovaries and testicles, in many ways, are very similar shape. 
these kind of round objects, aren't they? So I think that's quite a good clue to getting a sense of the shape uh, and also understanding that um, glandular cells are totally unique in the body. You know, fascia, muscles, neurons, all those other things, bone, it's so, so different. And they're very, very delicate uh, objects. So no wonder they're so protective and hidden deep. And the adrenals fit that uh, notion very well indeed. They're deeply held. You see them here uh, like hats on the top of the kidneys, just there. And then here's another picture. This time, the image is referring to this you know, deep uh, endocrine relationship that exists as a switching on of the adrenal glands. And in this case, it's a switching on of the adrenal cortex because the adrenals come in two parts, the kind of inner medulla and the outer cortical area. So this is hormonal switching on. So basically, there's lots of parts of the brain, parts of the nervous system as a whole, and obviously the whole sensory array is designed to detect um, threat. And uh, this is the kind of slower response. It's the releasing of uh, ACTH, so adrenocorticotropic hormone. And as we'll see soon, uh, after we've seen some pictures uh, of the adrenals in situ, we'll look at the more sort of instant nervous response. This is a slower endocrine response. The hypothalamus, is, it's always sort of monitoring things, isn't it? And it has its own so-called release factors, which are hormones in themselves, which switch the pituitary on, that produces another hormone that switches the adrenals on, that produces another set of hormones. The most common known is cortisol. So let's go on and have a look at this picture, which I think is from Marietta which is a very good at the physiology book. Anyway, you can see it's the same story. Basically, the hypothalamus um, sets off this cascade of changes and affects the anterior, anterior pituitary, really stimulates it to secrete all these different hormones. So it's a pretty busy part of the body, so at least. And one of those being this uh, um, ACTH, which is something you don't really want happening for too long because it's uh, utterly exhausting to the body. And um, here's a picture, here's a series of pictures now just showing a little bit more in detail where the adrenals sit. And I like this because it uh, it shows the kidneys sort of angling in, and it shows that the adrenals are very medial, and that they are sitting underneath the diaphragm. There's the diaphragm. I'm just going to put the pencil around that. There, uh, and all this stuff here is meant to be, I think, the um, central tendon of the um, diaphragm. Anyway, they're just sitting on the means, actually, that if you're breathing fully, if your diaphragm's working properly, they are sat there for a reason, and I think it's to give them a little bit of a mass on from the uh, movement of diaphragm. So, presumably, as you, not presumably, you do get excited um, in your breath when there is threat, so you're diaphragm starts moving quite quick and it uh, therefore stimulates the adrenals as well as all this sort of nervous system and endocrine response towards the adrenals. So I think there's a interesting mechanical situation. I mean really the adrenals could have been put anywhere. Uh, they probably need to be near a very powerful supply 
of blood. And I think if you look at things uh, in terms of the endocrine glands, they all hog into the major arteries and veins. So you know, the thyroid sort of hang off the carotids and the jugulars, the pituitary is literally sat at the same circle of Willis. And so the, the aorta for the head. So let me just come up a little bit further now. Oops, one second. Things are spinning. Okay, here's a nice pic. Which I have no idea of the source actually, but it's uh, showing this cluster of material, which is the biggest cluster in the body. Uh, one big pancreas, which is easily the biggest gland uh, in the body, though a lot of its function is uh, exocrine. And then here's the two adrenals that's above it. And then there's the sweep of the diaphragm, which is coming around the back here, isn't it? And coming down to somewhere around this sort of area here. Yeah, so the big sort of sweep, the kind of big dome. Uh, includes the adrenals. Actually, just before I leave that picture, some key muscles there that play pivotal roles in the area of, of, of not only the diaphragm, but the transversus abdominis, which is here, and the psoas muscles here, and you know, you get all kinds of shapes. So it won't be the first time I've noticed somebody's adrenals wound up. Nothing to do with the uh, nervous system or the endocrine system or any less, but actually to do with mechanical strain in the area. And uh, the psoas muscle gets uh, super distorted, which will, you know, uh, create all kinds of maybe torsions in the fascia. And in turn, that might affect into the adrenals. Anyway, I'll just say that. Here's a great picture showing the autonomic nervous system from side on. And I really like that picture. It shows you just how big it is, really. And it's the visceral, it's the visceral nervous system. And uh, you know what, what? What stands out? This doesn't it? This area here kind of loops out out at you, and that's the uh, so-called so solar plexus, isn't it? It's a celiac ganglion through which passes the innervation, wired innervation to the adrenals. So, you know, as if that area wasn't charged enough, it's also got a kind of adrenal pathway, and the adrenals are just sat either side of this. So if that uh, nervous ganglia gets excite excited, you know, clearly it's going to switch on the adrenal gland just by proximity to it. There's a picture showing the synthetics and parasympathetics. It's actually a very clever picture. So perhaps I'm just talk you through this, it might not be instantly obvious what's going on, but anyway, here's all the parasympathetic centers that are cranial based, uh, which are coming into the face here, and they've got all kinds of target glands, aren't they? So mostly salivary and lacrimal, and of course there's the other eye, and down here is the other part of the parasympathetic, which is coming into sort of pelvic viscera, mostly the, the sort of rectum, sigmoid colon, and the bladder. So they're called the pelvic nerves. And then here is the sympathetics. This is the sympathetic chain. So on the most part, well, it is. It's a thoracolumbar origin, isn't it, going up into the neck and right down into the pelvis. See here, those are your biggest ganglion. It's the celiac ganglion, and I'm just going to show the adrenals. 
There is a splanchnic nerve that runs right through that. It doesn't even put synapse in. And comes straight out the uh, straight out the cord. And uh, that's the I see that as the hyper hypothalamus's uh, motorway direct road to the adrenals. So, so your hypothalamus is on, and suddenly in milliseconds, your adrenals are getting electrified basically uh, by a sympathetic sympathetic nerve fibers. And that's exactly what's happening. The core is getting electrified. Let me just find the next picture here. Slowing down a bit. Right, let's have a look. Yeah, that's a good shot. The adrenals are not in it. Um, but if they were, they would be right under the all these parts of the diaphragm here, sort of gathering together in, into the what, what's called the crura. But anyway, I'm showing this because that whole area here is the celiac ganglia. And uh, there's a lot of ganglia on there. This whole area is rich with nerve sign up. And you get super uh, nervous, can't you? Everybody's experienced that. So just to show that. And then, well, it's quite a good picture as well. So it's a little bit uh, bright, isn't it? But anyway, those are the diaphragm. That's the esophageal hole. And then those are the adrenals. And I just think it's a, it's a good picture showing how much the adrenals really are right under it there. And then it's also showing the ganglia here. And it's showing some nerve fibers is just going out finally to the adrenals and then going through the cortex into the center of the adrenals and uh, stimulating the adrenal medullary glands and it, basically they are literally wired to produce an adrenaline application. Very good picture this. I mean these are all natural actually these last few. And I think he's put the shape of the adrenals in very nicely. Again, the diaphragm, just the whole area here is kind of wild. And he's also showing this kind of diagrammatic nervous flow. I think I've got a zoom in with that. So you probably can't see it very well. There. So T10, T11, L1, nerve roots passing through the sympathetic chain, passing through the celiac, and uh, aorticorenal and renal ganglia. So it's quite a mix there of ganglia. Into the medullary uh, glands. And then they lurch in action, literally adrenaline out within seconds. They're de designed to do that, which then go all over the body. I mean, um, you know, release a lot of uh, glucose really into the system because the body's obviously going to need a lot of energy. There's <clears throat> a fabulous picture from Sovatar. Again, the stomach's been cut away just to show what's behind there. So look, they're really hugged in there, and I do think the kidneys. I wonder if the kidneys have come up. I mean, of course, the kidneys have come up from down here. They budded embryologically and then started in there over a few weeks, and then at the adrenal glands, which do come from here. And I wonder if it's to kind of offer a little bit of a squeeze. It's like the kidneys are there and the diaphragm is descending on the kidneys and the adrenals are getting squeezed by it. 
I mean, I get why the kidneys need to be up here because, you know, you need a kind of head for the urine to flow. You couldn't have the kidneys too close to the bladder, I guess. This next picture is um, so, you know, clinically fantastic. And there's all kinds of glands here. Thyroid and parathyroid. It's saying that T3 to T5 area is kind of critical for anything that's going off with thyroid and parathyroid. And the pituitary gland as well, because uh, the sympathetics are you know, going to get involved in this, and that might affect things uh, in terms of blood flow, and, uh, and, you know, vertebral balance. And then further down here is adrenals. So T5 right down to T8. So that kind of mid thoracic area is a key area for the adrenal gland. So if there's all kinds of, you know, fixation in the vertebral column there, the vertebral issue. I don't know, rotations, torsions, all things that you can get. Uh, that's a mechanically induced um, adrenalization that can definitely occur. Well, just there's a lot of tension here, but you know, there's a lot of compensation and muscles, super tight muscles that are affecting into things. And you see the pancreas up a bit further down, so that's, that's kind of going into the lower T's. Very useful stuff, this, I think. But anyway, it shows you just how uh, high the innervation is for the adrenals, even though they're not actually that high, but they're kind of more down here to sort of uh, T9 physically. Very nice picture showing portals into sympathetic nose systems. John Chip. You've got this together. He's done a great job. And just showing that you know the kind of uh, places that can get quite uh, lit up in our systems. Uh, so the adrenals are marked here very wisely. Ganglia that are running in the uh, abdominal zone, and then. The sort of top and bottom of the sympathetics, uh, the cardio, pulmonary plexus, and then obviously the brain stem. But uh, I'd say all that lights up really. I mean, I mean, it's the whole system. But some parts of this might be lit up more brightly. And I think the adrenals are as one of those places, it's a hot spot in the body. So, how to help all this out because actually what's at the back of any adrenalized state is a sympathetic nervous system that's uh, seriously turned on and uh, for sure uh, this will get some, I mean the adrenals are a part of the system so actually going to the adrenals themselves could be super useful uh, going to the ends of the I mean, touching the end chain, going to any of these gangs, or really going to the brainstem. I mean, any of these places are just great spots to help out. Uh, but I think in the practical, that we will just go for this. Um, although it might be quite nice just to touch here and then touch here as well. So that could be super useful. Next picture, uh, we're looking at um, a very nice sequence showing the different kinds of endocrine responses. So A is your kind of classic hormonal. So actually this picture is showing you the two uh, ways the adrenal glands are turned on. This is the fastest way here. Yeah, so there's a unique relationship between a gland and the nervous system. It doesn't exist anywhere else, it just exists with the adrenal medulla. 
and it really is, you know, get out of life-threatening situations. It's meant so. Here's the sympathetic nerve pathway into the center of that. So it's capillary. It's, you know, the capillary bed takes the noradrenaline, adrenaline with the rest of the body. And here's the slightly slower response. So this is the hypothalamic, the HPA. This is not. Yeah, and then this is streaming out of the cortex. Adrenal cortex, adrenal medulla. Super fast, slow, takes a few hours really, takes milliseconds. That on the whole is your short term stress response. That on the whole is your long term stress response. And here it is. Here's a diagram of that. So stress, brain leaps into stress mode because it's felt or seen something that's not okay, that it's uh, understanding to be threatening. Here's your first response. What turn stress response? Like glycogen broken down to glucose increases blood glucose. Obviously, you're going to need that for your cells, particularly the muscle cells, to fight or flight. Increase blood pressure. That's there, isn't it? To take the blood out from the core to the periphery because you're going to be using your arms and legs to flight. Increase breathing rate. Along with glucose, you need oxygen. So lots of glucose and lots of oxygen. Increase metabolic rate. So basically, that is turning up the speed at which cells move internally. And uh, changing blood flow patterns leading to increased alertness and decreased digestion and kidney activity. The gut and the urogenital system on the whole shuts down. And you go into the super alert state, mostly driven by the reticular nation in your brain stem. And then the long-term stress state is um, kind of following up, up from that and doing something similar, but doing something extra as well. So it's kind of adding to retention of electrolytes, increased blood volume and blood pressure. So that's kind of adding to what's going on here. Plus, it is going a step further. It's saying, well, not just reduce uh, breaking down glycogen, which is your liver energy reserves, but let's start breaking proteins and fats down. So proteins being muscle and fat being uh, all that yellow marrow stuff, the sort of visceral fat, they've got a lot of energy in them. There's a lot of glucose storage there. And it, it, it suppresses the immune system really to be as efficient as possible so your body isn't using any other of its energy in any other way and you can see just looking at this if this is this you know starts to go for too long but it's going to be disastrous you just don't want to have long-term stress short term is not great because it kind of ultimately becomes a chronic issue around all these things. So blood pressure issues, your breathing doesn't return to normal, and uh, your digestion certainly doesn't. And then over here, you, you, you're really breaking the body down. And there's only so long you can do that for, and your immune system is depressed. Uh, that's not going to help you. As well. So this is a damn good reason for you to really give your adrenal gland some help. And uh, I, yeah, I just wonder if there's any questions. You have know, been talking for about half an hour. There's a little chat section here if you want to type something in. Uh, otherwise, I'm going to move towards uh, just some uh, inclusion around the adrenals, and then I'm, then I'm going to talk through a exercise which involves touch, a little location of your dream and then a 
kind of felt sense of your um, endocrine and nervous. Uh, do adrenals come in for panic attacks? Yes, I think they do. I think it's uh, it's a good question. Yeah, I think uh, maybe a panic attack is a uh, really obviously some resolved trauma, and it's a uh, it's very definitely an unresolved adrenal state. So that there's this ongoing adrenalization in the background, and some really that just makes you hypersensitive, and something happens around you which uh, tips the balance. And you go into uh, a panic attack. So contacting adrenals will be good. Yes, he would have actually. I know the panic attack solution is to breathe into a paper bag and all those sorts of things, or to get uh, control of your breath. I think that's a very good idea. But if you're somebody who's having a panic attack. You were instructing them to slow the breath down and to get control. It would be a really brilliant thing is to bring your hand across the adrenal just to kind of support them there and just to really give them a better, uh, a better first aid. Thank you for that question. And here's how to locate your adrenals. Well, they're atop your kidneys. And uh, kind of everyone knows where the kidneys are, I guess. Uh, they hug into the aorta. And, well, we should put the vena cava there as well. But under the diaphragm, they're behind the ninth and 10th ribs. So you've got that situation, haven't you, with if you come up from the sacrum, you come to the iliac crest. So that's the top of the pelvis, the bony pelvis. Then that air soft tissue between the iliac crest and your floating ribs, which I call the waist. That's where your belt kind of hangs into, isn't it? And that's where the bottom of the kidneys are. And then T12 and T11, the top half of the kidneys. And then on top of that, that's the location of the adrenal. So it is T9, T10. So we'll take that into consideration when we touch nervous sphere core. So you can tell the adrenals easy through touch. Oh, diabetes can also be caused by stress. Yes, big time. I think the rise in the later diabetes, well, it's not really late onset anymore, it's kind of early onset is uh, through continuous stress. I think that's becoming so obviously the case. And then if one gland is stressed, it stresses the whole neuroendocrine immune system so that all the endocrine balance is affected. You know, something is in separation from other things. So one gland goes crazy, they all start to be affected by it. And obviously, the immune system, the nervous system, will be part of that response. So that's why I put this here. Level of excitation. So when you do touch into or come into felt sense awareness of your adrenals, notice how excitatory they are. Is do you think you have adrenalization going on? And know that it's part of your neuroendocrine immune system, which is your basic uh, operating system. That is the operating system of the body. With all that doing so well, that will be powerfully affected by it. Okay. So let's test out how to calm down profoundly. And uh, once you make contact with the adrenals, then I'm going to talk you through feeling the different hormones, because there is a hormonal space to uh, experience. So let's start. I'm going to pull my, come onto the edge of my chair a bit. Use the back of your hands. 
and uh, I want you to take your lucky hands around the back here to your sacrum and let's just come up bit by bit and then come up to press a little feel the um, top of the pelvis and feel the act press and then you can feel the sort of soft tissue that's a mix of uh, muscles and deep, deeper in it's the kidneys and then come a bit further up and you feel your, your floating rib yeah, so I'd say a hand my hand with it, the bottom of it can touch the iliac press and the top of it is probably at T11 floating rib so what I'd say is come up a whole hand width and don't be too far out so you're now above the kidneys I'm actually going to lean into the chair that's better I need to hold up my hands good and um, let's listen through the hands to the local area now so there's obviously lots of musculature here I mean check out how it is for you tension in this area is not so great for anything at this level and uh, obviously it's quite funny as well there's ribs and there's a spine but I want you to invite a relationship to the sort of internal volume uh, the kind of visceral cavity and uh, I want you to start tracking the movement of your diaphragm so just for a minute come into a sense of breathing and uh, this sort of flow in flow out of lungs which is probably the most obvious felt sense and the second most obvious is probably the rib cage rising and falling and then the third, the hidden belt sense is the diaphragm flattening and doming. And you can probably tell that from the pressure into the abdominal cavity. Right, and let's uh, be interested in the movement of blood because glands are kind of part of the circulatory system. I mean, everything is, but deeply part of it. So, I want you to keep your hands where they are and see if you can come into a sense of your heart now. So, we've done the lungs and breathing. Come into a sense of your heart and I want you to open up the circulatory system and the biggest push out from the heart is through the aorta it's quite easy to push in. it's uh, this big bend and there's this enormous streaming of blood down around the back of it passing through the diaphragm and then passing right between your hands and I think that might help lead you to the adrenals. It'll certainly give you a sense of depth. Now, mine is starting to come through, and I, I'm struck by what we just said before that there is a nervous sense in the adrenals. I'm sure, I'm sure you'll get a sense of that. Nervy is in neural or sparked up. I think we're all slightly adrenalized or, or strongly adrenalized these days. So uh, it should be showing. And I just want to know that feeling the sympathetic innovation to the center of the adrenal glands, the medulla. How is it on the left compared to the right? Because there can be quite a big difference. Right, 
Right, and uh, let's open up to what the medulla is producing. Let's uh, put that hormonal sense series of uh, cues. So you are now listening to a gland, but actually that is just one part of this gland's action. So I want you to come into a sense of blood flow, the capillary within the gland. So the gland is spongy. This is really built upon a capillary there, a huge one. And then there is a movement of adrenaline out of the gland through the venous return. So it's going straight into the vena cava, straight up to your heart, and then out in all directions to all cells of the body by the circulation system. And then it's dropping into the capillary beds of which are everywhere and into the interstitial space, which is the this incredible uh, space of reaction between cells and substances, so ligands. And adrenaline is binding with cells as receptors that fit the molecule. So I just want to kind of sit with the hormonal space and the gland, but actually the core of this gland. And um, there will be a natural calming down just from paying attention to it. It keeps going all the time because it's so unconscious. And sometimes they've been lit up so long they take some convincing. And the convincing might be what I mentioned before about the portals of the sympathetic. So keep one of your hands across both adrenals and then take the other hand. And how about you place it on the back of the hand bed for a minute or two and open up to the stem. And sometimes it takes both, this kind of double contact to uh, convince it. Yeah, that's starting to have some Deep in it. It's great. We're listening to glands, we're listening to the circulatory system and blood, and we're tuning in as well to the nervous sympathetic, the, the autonomic system. And obviously, you could do this lying down on your back. And I recommend that, you know. And then, after a while, you can switch your hand position. So, and you lie there for as long as you wish, really. Minutes, five minutes, ten minutes. Right, and just let's go to part two now, which is come back to the adrenals. <clears throat> uh, one on each again. And this time we're going to explore the relationship. We're going to explore 
the adrenal cortex, and uh, uh, this is the, the you know the action of the endocrine system. So the HPA endocrine response, but as opposed to the sympathetic response. Right. So let's open up to the outside of the adrenals. So this is the part of the adrenals that isn't that they're nervous. It feels very different. I mean, it's all about hormones uh, ex exciting these cells, so ACTH. It's all about the pituitary now, acting on the adrenals. And there's another hormonal space. It's not adre the adrenaline. Space. It's the cortisol space. So what I want you to be interested in is really is there any sense of action in the cortex? Is it is it busy? Because if it is, you're probably suffering from long term stress. However, it can change. Yeah. Same mechanism. It's coming into awareness. So these things go on behind the curtain. And it's, out, it's, it's, it's kind of opening the curtains to it. Well, let's do the same thing. Let's, there's this amazing cascade from your hypothalamus to your pituitary, to the adrenal cortex, to all the cells. It's one hormone to in the next, to the next. And it will take you into a whole body relationship because at the end of the, the glucocorticoids and the mucorticoids act on a lot of the body some parts more than others. Maybe sitting or lying with the adrenal cortex, with awareness, with this kind of neutral touch, will bring about homeostasis. And it might be just what it means. To respond, and you can do it all on your own. And so I'll just be quiet for the next minute or two, and then then I'll bring it to a close. Right, and then just come back into me, give you give your arms a break in your hands and just let your adrenals slide back into the unconscious. And, and um, anyway, I hope that's been useful. I, if you do have uh, strong reactions to all of that, I, things are quite turned on, I'd really recommend you do the exercise daily. And I think in a few days it uh, would be quite a different story. Okay, it's so now two, so I've been going about 50 minutes. And uh, yeah, thanks for joining me. And I'll be back and it's talking about actually a similar area, the uh, thoracic lumbar area, this tricky part of the body, and uh, just how to appreciate what goes on there.
and now you know your dream is going there as well. Okay. Good night.